12 in the fifth. I'm joined by Shocker head coach Chris Lamb. And before the match, you more or less predicted that this conference was going to be a survival test, and certainly uh, nothing about this match would change that feeling at all. Yeah, I don't, I mean, we, we get out hit for this match. We, we, I, I was bragging before the match to our, our boosters that, you know, I was explaining to them what I explained to you. They're like, well, how, how good can we do? I go, oh, we got firepower. Well, it turns out I don't think we got that much firepower. Um, we were, we were, uh, you know, we hit 175 tonight. Um, I, I, no, we hit, we hit 152. They had, they had more kills than us. Uh, and, we're, you know, and here, but here's what I'm frustrated with. And first of all, congratulations to the girls and battling back. Uh, we're down big in the fifth. But here's what's frustrating. Uh, we, we got out of the way we started. I mean, I'm glad we can make adjustments, but Chase Jackson hasn't played all year. Well, Reagan Stylewall wasn't performing, so Chase had to go in. Um, the second half of our 6-2 with, with, with Cora setting or, or Jordan Roberts setting, we couldn't get any production there. They couldn't connect with Abby Pugh. Uh, put, we put Grace Birkin in for Abby Pugh, um, and that wasn't working. It wasn't Grace's fault. Couldn't connect there, and we ended up in a 5-1, which we haven't been in all year. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's like it's frustrating that you know you gotta you gotta get out of what you're trained and what you're good at. Um, but it's also it's also encouraging, that, especially with a young team, that you can make adjustments. But um, you know, if we, if we end up going to the five, the problem there is our, our, our littles don't really pass and dig at, at the level they would need to for us to feel like we get the benefit in the five by, by better defense and better passing. That, that's, that hasn't proven itself. So, I mean, I, 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 I ought to be ecstatic that we came back for that win, but I, I'm sitting here, you know, <laughs> pretty concerned. I mean, Sean and Austin and I, we up to 2 a.m. this morning, um, you know, asking questions and answering questions. and. You know, I told you I told you that one of the good things about playing the top teams is it puts you at the drawing board and it, it helps prepare your team. Well, I feel like right now, I feel like well, those four weeks didn't have anything to do with us jumping into that uh, adjustment that we made. And, you know, that part's interesting for me for sure. And you mentioned making adjustments. This had to be a really hard one and strange one to do that because in the first and third sets, you were fairly dominant. And you have to look at it and think, well, we got a few things going. But the second and fourth, they were just about as dominant. It looked like nothing was working for you. Yeah, well, I told the girls after we won game two that, they, that Tulane's better than that. They, they took a lot of swings where they wouldn't finish their swing. They were jumping backwards in the balls. And, like, and I knew that Tulane took better approaches than that. And, you know, then you saw once they got their shoulders moved up a little bit. You saw, you know, what could happen. But, I mean, I, I would, when we break this thing down, I think you're going to see, you know, dominant performance by them in the middle. And I was sort of bragging that I thought we'd be top third as a pair of middles uh, in the conference. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, they, they weren't overwhelming there in the middle. But uh, I, just, I just felt like they were going there for side outs and we were doing anything but we could do not to do that. And that was frustrating. Well, another match Sunday. We'll let you get back to the drawing board, and we'll see you there. Okay, Mike. Thanks. <laughs> Chris Lamb joining us.